Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is 2D grid execution macro. Let's cover something first. This is a built-in macro, and a macro is a collection of nodes. You can think of it as a function that was built into the engine itself, except it's user-created. This is not something that's actually a function. It's just a user-created collection of nodes. You'll find this macro in the rendered texture macros, and for whatever reason, when they added this in, it's now public in the actor class. But this is a really useful macro built into the engine itself right now that I thought I thought I would cover. Now, what does this do? You determine the size of each sector or the spacing between each part in your grid. Determine where it's going to go. Determine the amount on the X and the Y. And then when you run it, it outputs values you can do something with. So in this case, let's say I set it up to a 2x2 two two grid with 150 for my size. And I hit play, you'll notice I now have a 2x2 two two grid of my blocks, 150 apart. Now these blocks are 100 in terms of their width. So if I do 100, you'll notice it looks like it's a contiguous block. But it's actually four blocks that were placed together correctly. Now let's go ahead and look at the outputs. This one is a little bit weird because this is a macro and I'll cover how we might want to improve it in a little bit. But there is one output, and like an if loop or a for loop, like a loop, this output will fire off multiple times based on our input. So in this case, we have a 2x and a 2y, which means four times this pin will execute. In my example, I'm simply spawning a box every time it executes. Current point is which point is this? So in our loop, where are we at? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever it is. Total points is our total number of points. 0 to 1 phase is how far along between 0 and 100% or 0 and 1 is our execution. So in this case, if we were to print a string, we'll go ahead and plug our 0 to 1 phase in. Keep in mind we have four of these happening. Let's go ahead and extend this to 15 seconds and we'll hit play. You'll notice 0, 0.25, 5, and 75. So the first cube was executed at 0%, 25%, 50%, and 75%. Now the last one doesn't get executed at all because you're at 100%. This is just the way this is set up. So this lets you know how far along your creation process, your process is. Polycenter is where, based on this information, is going to be the center point for the current point we're at. X row and Y row is basically during our loop, where are we at? What is our current X and what is our current Y? So with all this information, you could make yourself a really simple grid. In this case, you know, I could type in something like five by five, hit play, and there's a five by five grid. Really simple and easily done. My, let me move my actual location down a little bit so I can jump on it, there we go. And you can see, here's a five by five grid based on the center point. My center point is gonna be basically where this macro is running at. Now a few things to note. First of all, this is a macro and because it's a macro, it has a parent class. The parent class is actor. If I were to, for example, go in my widget and type in 2D grid, I'm not gonna find it, even if I uncheck context sensitivity. I can even show you by going to library, utilities, and then looking, and you're not going to find the 2D grid execution macro in here. Macros work where the parent has to be the class it's called in. So if we go inside of an actor, and then I looked, now we can find, under utilities, we can find our 2D grid execution macro. So it's something to keep in mind. This macro only fires off inside of an actor or something that's a child of an actor. Second of all, you'll notice that while this works, we don't actually know when it's done. There's no output. What you can do if you want to use this is you could go into the blueprint, go into the macro itself by double clicking, and you could actually pull this information out, save it into your own macro and put it into your own thing. Because this is an engine macro, it will be overwritten whenever there's engine updates. One thing I'd recommend doing is you could easily put in an output 
to show it's finished. In our outputs, let's go ahead and put a new. We're going to do a finished, is what we're going to call it, and we're going to make it an execute wire. Then we're going to grab our first complete. This is our first loop, so this will basically be our X loop, and this will be our Y loop, our inner loop. When our output loop is done, we want this thing to finish. So we can grab from our completed on our first loop here. You'll notice it comes in, starts, runs through the first loop, runs through the second loop, and does our X's and Y's. Grab the output of our first loop, the completed, put it into our new finished output here on our output. And if we save this and we go back in, now we have it finished. And we could easily use this, print string for example, and we can do, I am now finished. Now when we run this, we will not only get our 5x5 grid, but it showed I am now finished. That's an easy way to modify the existing macro. Keep in mind, again, when the next version of the engine comes in, this macro will be replaced with its original version. But as you saw, you could easily just update this again. I wouldn't recommend that because the macro itself will basically break anything it's connected to. I would just take all this code, copy it out to your own macro library, and reuse it. It's a nice, good, easy start to using a simple 2D grid in macro format inside the engine. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our 2D grid execution macro. Remember, it takes in our sizes. How big do we want each grid to be, each square in our grid? Where's our center going to be? How big is it in terms of X and Y? And then it outputs where we currently are in terms of the current point, how many there are total, how far along our process is, where that center point is for the current X and Y we are creating, the current X and Y we are creating, and then you can do whatever you want with it. In this case, I'm feeding that into a spawning of a box.